Chapter 4 If one were looking for the center of the standout group amongst the girls of Class 2C, Emmy Chan, I saw the magazine that came out yesterday Tilda. That would be Kihara Ma, yeah, the girl whose choice to dye her long straight hair over the break was met with fawning admiration from the girls but concealed disapproval from the boys. Then, it said that you're putting your modeling on hold for a while, but is that really true? She had a small and oddly voluptuous beauty mark near her mouth, and she and Kashi Nanako were a pair of good friends. When the pair of girls who were flashier together as a set started talking with Ami, some more girls gathered around as if being summoned. Ma, you chan, so you took the time to see this month's issue. Thanks Dilda. That's right, I was able to arrange for some time off work. Having ascended to the top of the standout group, Emmy was dispensing a simply dazzling smile, and the surrounding girls were all abuzz, basically saying that's such a waste Tilda. A few guys whose eyes were unintentionally drawn to the scene, somehow, it feels like the girls in our class have gotten cuter overall. Really, when it comes to girls, forget the underclassmen, the girls in our class are the best, aren't they? That's right, once you get to know one another properly, you can start building a relationship. It's the simplest way. Ah Tilda, when I joined this class in April and was wondering just how Takazu and the Palm Top Tiger got together, I got really depressed, but now that I think about it, isn't that the greatest luck dot there's still Ma, yeah, and even Nanako, and then best of all, there's Emi dot if you just look at her face, the Palm Top Tiger is super cute, but dot they're all really cute. Riji was stuck between the black rimmed glasses wearing Hisam Itsunoto and the superficial long haired Kjiharuda who were both smiling happily. Pretending not to hear them and narrowing his eyes, Riji was in the middle of reattaching the button that had fallen off from his cuff using a sewing kit. It's good that they were able to think like that, while that's what he was thinking, he was a pacifist who wouldn't actually say it out loud. In any case, Noto and Haruta had told him about yesterday's meeting with the freshman girls and how, after the pair treated the girls to McDonald's and karaoke, it had ended horribly with the girls just saying thank you and not even giving out their email addresses. Ah, it's Maruo. Hey, hey, as Ami's childhood friend, don't you think it's a waste too? About how she's taking a break from modeling, I mean. Being flagged down by Ma, yeah, Kitamura who was fondly called Maruo amongst the girls, readjusted his glasses and turned to face them. Isn't it fine? As long as that's what Emmy has frankly decided. She can still go back to modeling once she's graduated from high school. Hey Tilda. She's so cute like this, it really feels like a waste. Maruo, you act too business-like to Emmy chan Don't say things like frankly. That's right, that's right. Their shrill voices besieged Kitamura from all sides, but there was an apparent tone of laughter that lacked any actual anger or scorn. According to the girls, Kitamura was absolutely everyone's adorable prized possession. What an inconspicuously popular guy. I wonder if I should wear glasses, too. At Haruda's mutterings, the unpopular glasses wearing Noto put on a complicated expression. However, Kitamura just shrugged his shoulders, going, Yeah. Yeah with a bitter smile before he escaped from the group of exceptionally cute girls while acting perplexed. Oh, everyone's here. With a face that made it seem as if he was being rescued, Kitamura came to a halt next to Riji and the others. Damn it, go back, get out of here. You aristocrat. This here is a crab canning boat, it's not a place for someone like you. Ha, nice one. Aim for the world. Brushing aside Haruta's harsh words with a laughing smile, Kitamura took a seat facing Riji. If the group around Ami was like the sunlight, then the group of four boys was just like the shade. But, it's not like it's a real waste you know. The flashy Ami spoke in remarkably cheery voice that resounded throughout the classroom at break time. I've been wanting to enjoy a normal high school life like this. So this is fine. I'm even able to make lots of friends like this. You know, I'm really the happiest right now. That's because everyone is here. How is she so good like this Tilda? Emmy chan is just too good exclamation mark the girl's excited voices were practically sighs of admiration. Riji instinctively glanced over at the side of Kitamura's face. Even while he and Haruta were continuing to joke around, 
for just an instant it looked like Kitamura gave an almost imperceptibly small sigh. Is that how it is, yeah I guess that makes sense. I guess since models are busy and have to even go on diets and do other troublesome things, an ordinary high school girl wouldn't be able to pull it off at all, right? Nanako was nodding, and Ma Yo also chimed in with a yeah, that's right. As she opened her already large eyes even wider. That's something I've been wanting to ask. Emi-chan, you're really slender. You must have some sort of diet, don't you? Is there a super specialized diet exclusively designed for models? Come on, tell us Tilda, please tell us. Yeah, I want to hear it. Eh? Emi-chan's diet? I want to know too Tilda. When the discussion turned to dieting, the group surrounding Emi became all the more excited. However, Emi at first mumbled aw come on then gave a small laugh and started speaking. I don't really diet or anything, so I don't know about that. It seems like I'm naturally predisposed to not getting fat. I eat whatever I want, but as long as I eat healthily, it seems like I'm fine. I really love eating things like pastries, so I think it's actually better for my body if I don't restrain myself or anything. She spoke with a smile. But ever so slightly. The corners of her mouth might have twisted mockingly. Predisposed. One of them muttered quietly. Huen. Is that so? I don't get it. E. Emmy probably noticed it. That the atmosphere of admiration around her had suddenly dropped in temperature by about three degrees. That Ma Ya, who had been pushing herself every day for half a year to struggle and persevere with her afternoon diet of only salad and oolong tea was wearing a frozen expression. And that Nanako, who just yesterday had been desperately walking off calories and had even turned down her father's gift of sushi, looked as if her eyelids were twitching. Even if she reapplied her good girl facade, she had for some reason ended up allowing a glimpse of her true personality to rise to the surface. It was obvious that in that instant the girl's eyes had turned cold, so much so that even someone like Riji took notice. Unforgivable. Bang. The sound of someone standing up and knocking back her chair, the roaring voice filled with anger made the chilled atmosphere tremble. The vein in her temple had risen in the shape of a cross and her two fists were practically audible with a crackling sound as she walked towards the front of the otherwise silent classroom. Her name was Minori Kushida. An energetic girl who, unsatisfied with just her club activities, decided on longer paths both between school and home and on the way to her part-time jobs and she always traversed them at a fast pace. No matter how it looks, I'm a warrior of dieting, you know. That's got to be a lie Riggi thought with his head tilted. Just last month she supposedly ate a bucket of pudding by herself. However, it seemed like she was being serious. Taiga. You're here aren't you? Yeah. The wild beast who was associated with her as a steadfast friend, Taiga Ayaka made her way forward. This girl at least. There is just no way she is even close to being on a diet, Riji thought, but if it was for her friend, Taiga was the type of girl who would help out no matter what. Even if she had gone and eaten two servings of tonkatsu. Let's go Taiga. Hey, Minren. Really? Okay Taiga. Really? The two suddenly outstretched their arms widely, and with a sidestep, started nimbly grappling sumo style within the ring of girls, eh? Wait. W.H., what? They moved over to Emmy, who was sitting in the center. The other girls were going Kai and Kai and fled the area looking oddly indifferent to the situation, leaving nothing to protect Emmy. In perfect harmony, Taiga and Minori quickly chased down Emmy, who stood up in a vain attempt to escape the linked pair that started spinning around her to prevent her from getting away. What the heck you guys? Fu ha ha ha. Can you break free from our guard? Young lady? Excuse me for being such a shorty. Excuse my weird name. Why, your name? What are you talking about? When he could see her face, Ami's expression was of confusion and bewilderment, but she didn't seem like she was going to act against the two's unbreakable guard as she just cowered nervously. Was it okay to not help her? Riji checked Kitamura's face, but just muttering Aratilda like an old lady. Kitamura made no attempt to stand up. This is a case of bullying. The palm-top tiger and Gushida, they're bullying Emi-tan. 
people might have noticed, but no one could do anything about it. Ready? Kawashima-kun? Minori twisted her lips charmingly into a huge grin. At Ami's back, Taiga grasped and locked up her thin limbs. Then, hey, wait you guys, wh dotya. Kaya told her. Ami's shriek resounded. Minori had sprung forward like a striking snake and grabbed firmly with both hands onto Ami's abdomen, which was covered by her blazer. Ho dot this is, this is. Yugu. When she saw her grin, Ami's expression stiffened in dismay. Then Minori slowly licked her lips once, teacher. Kawashima-san, she's been hiding flab in her gut. She turned into a devil. Rubbing the excess flesh she was gripping, hey 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 hey. It's customary on trips to bring 300 yen worth of meat at most. Is this 300 yen worth of excess flab? Eh? This flab isn't from eating bananas. S, S, street, stop it, stop, Nu Utoda. Minori was violently moving both her hands that were thrust under Ami's uniform back and forth. The boys were blushing as their questionable imaginations were being stimulated. Oh, you've been gathering up quite a bit. Haven't you? N, na, ooh, ooh, stop it. What's with that predisposed nonsense? Just what's this then? What's this right here? Eh? Nu, cut it out, Kaya. Ah ha ha. This here is for meat buns. Ah ha ha ha. And this is for Hagen Doss. Take this, Divine Fist of Convenience Store's Shining Family Market version. High calories. I said stop that, dot, Naya. Minori's fist seemed to leave a golden trail, and in the end she stretched out from Ami's stomach a bit of quivering flesh, which was certainly present but very minor. Ami's screams lasted for quite a while, but eventually they dissipated into empty space and vanished. A silence took over with everyone left breathless. Eventually, Taiga released Ami from her restraining hold. Completely sapped of any strength, the fool fell to her knees without saying anything. Holding her clenched hands to her heart, Minori looked towards the heavens. Scattered like stardust, I dedicate this to the tears of dieting warriors. You tilde, you tilde, you tilde. Released at last, Emi was clutching at her disheveled clothing with both hands while still pitifully kneeling on the floor. She sadly sat on the ground in a position hiding her small face flushed full red, and seemed to be crying and trembling, making low sobbing sounds. Looking down at her condition, Minori smiled wholeheartedly in satisfaction. Taiga. Your tattling is always so accurate. Similarly looking down on Emmy, Taiga's lips were also parted in a wide happy smile. No no, it was all Minrin. You did such a good job. And then, slowly making her way over to stand right above Emmy, Taiga's eyes glistened with a heartfelt happiness. Her face was rosy with pleasure and her protruding lips were deep red like an animal that had gorged on blood. Kawashima-san. I'll introduce you, this here is my best friend, Minrin. So now you know for sure that I have friends other than Ryuji. 4649. Note, 4 equals yo slash shii, 6 equals ro, 9 equals ku, 4649 equals yoroshiko which means something like nice to met you, raising her hand, Minori laughed. Then, standing next to her, Taiga pointed straight at Emmy. This is, you covert glutton. You, you eat too much. See Lang. She said it plain as day, just like that. Ami's shoulders sagged as if she had no willpower left at all. Minori and Taiga were standing shoulder to shoulder going ha 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 ha. Laughing boisterously, they high-fived. You're the best, no. You're the best. These two devils started to walk off as they occasionally looked at one another and whispered. Then, taking a final look back. Hey, plan on running a marathon? A black jersey would definitely suit you. At Taiga's final parting shot, Amy suddenly looked up. It probably occurred to her that she had been spotted shopping at the convenience store. She wiped the tears from the corner of her eyes with her thumb. I'll show you running a marathon or whatever. Running around and around and around, you damned midge. Amy Chan, you okay, Tilda? A short squeak, Amy started biting her lip to hold back a wail. SM.Neil, she tried mending her appearance. I, I'm fine. 
she tried to smile at the girls who were lending support. It was a habit for someone skilled at controlling her impression. That was so wrong. Amy Chan isn't fat at all Tilda. Ah, that was horrible, those two are so violent Tilda. The girls voiced words that at least seemed kind, but everyone seemed to be laughing somewhat happily as well. Similarly trying to laugh as she stood up, it seemed Amy was gritting her teeth as if trying to endure that humiliation. The mask of the smiling angel, as to be expected, seemed to have been shattered and was beginning to disappear. You guys are demons. He was certainly happy from the bottom of his heart that he could see Minori's refreshing face, but even so, Riji couldn't keep himself from muttering. Emmy might have in fact been rescued, but he still wondered if this was okay. No matter what might have happened, it still felt like they went overboard. Emmy had just become so pitiful. However, I see. For some reason, looking as though he had figured something out on his own, Kitamura was nodding lightly. If you act that way, then Emi will become like that. Riji was thinking just what in the world do you mean by become like that, but the bell signifying the end of recess rang before he could ask his question. Night was drawing nearer as the sunlight of the long early summer's day began to recede. Housewives out shopping, middle school students finished with their club activities heading home with their bikes, children walking their dogs, and students wearing earphones with dangling white cords. Shadows intermingled chaotically along the sidewalk lined with Japanese Zelkova trees in full foliage as everybody walked hurriedly amidst the slightly chilly wind. Having finished shopping at the busy supermarket, Ruji and Taigo also joined the mass of people and headed to the Takazu residence beneath the darkening indigo sky. It seemed the events at school had done wonders to relieve her stress, Fu Tilda, Fu En. Taigo was walking a little in front of Ruji and completely different from her broken down state yesterday, hummed to herself while lightly swinging her head back and forth. It was unusual, however, Riji just followed her without saying anything as the shopping bag swung in his hands. If he were to say even a single phrase, like how rare or something, she would probably get angry and stop humming immediately. Her somewhat off humming, it really was quite rare. He overheard a little girl who was passing by ask of her mother, that person, is she a princess? Certainly with Taiga's fashion sense, she might have seemed to children like a stereotypical princess straight from a fairy tale. Underneath her pale lime green cardigan was a one-piece dress patterned with small flowers, and the lacy pure white petticoat, distinguishable beneath the partially unbuttoned dress, had numerous layers of frill that airily added a lot of volume and made Taiga's short body look very charming. Her long and somewhat wavy hair was tied with a ribbon, which was unusual, and she even had a beaded purse and dainty white sandals that Riji hadn't seen before. Although she dressed in such fashion every day, today nevertheless seemed especially extravagant. Really though, it must have been her mood. When it was time to go home after school, Taiga, with a smile, said something along the lines of, I'm going home first, so come get me when you go shopping, and somehow she even waved farewell to Kitamura who was next to Riji. Of course, her face was completely red, both her eyes were resolutely turned upwards, she couldn't get herself to say anything, and her face was horribly stiff, but still. Riji saw Taiga give a small leap on the spot after Kitamura acknowledged her with a new. Even if it was only that, he might as well enjoy Taiga's current happiness. Hey Riji. Suddenly turning his way, Taiga slowed down until she was beside Riji and matched his pace. This was also quite unusual. Walking in front as if she was his master or walking angrily behind him in sullen contempt, those were Taiga's normal positions. Are you cooking salmon today? The abnormal Taiga inquired with a calm voice, which seriously moved Riji. This current state of affairs, it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. I'm thinking Munir style. First adding salt and pepper, then sprinkling it with flour, and then frying it in butter. It should be tasty if we eat it with ketchup. That's good. Sounds delicious. The calm conversation that sounded just like a discussion between young housewives was suddenly hit by a major earthquake in the next instant. I know, maybe I'll make a salad. As the word salad, the shopping bag slipped out of Riji's hands. What? Riji looked up with his eyes wide, Tigel was scrunching her lips in displeasure. Even so, 
Her anger was only up to about 30% from normal. N, nothing. I was just surprised. Just now. I must have been hearing things. Yeah, that must be it. Brushing off the surprise and picking up the shopping bag, he was going to pretend that nothing had happened, but, that's not so. Even I can make a salad at least. It's not that easy. Taiga, who doesn't even take her rice bowl to the kitchen after she's done eating, is saying she will make a salad. The same Taiga who nearly starved to death because the Benta shop had closed down. Was he still in the real world? Nearly at a loss for words, Riji started shaking his head back and forth. I, it's impossible. Why is that? You underestimate me too much. Fufu, laughing almost haughtily, Taiga puffed up her chest with pride and took on an imposing stance. When I was in elementary school, I made one in class. A salad, I mean. I even made the dressing. Well then, try telling me how you do it. That's easy. First, you buy the lettuce, right? Then you separate the leaves, don't you? Then you slice them up, right? Then you put it on a plate, right? Then you serve it with mayonnaise, right? And with that it's done. That's not right. Riggi firmly shook his head. It's not that I hate simplicity, but the first thing to do is wash the lettuce. You run it under cold water don't you? Just what were you talking about dressing for? Such trivial things. It's not trivial. It's really important, if you don't run the lettuce under cold water to make it crisp, then it'll be all limp when you eat it, won't it? Sister-in-law. Eh? Calling him such an unexpected name, Taiga left behind Ryuji, whose eyes had become sharp and bright, and started walking in front of him at her normal position. Ryuji is such a sister-in-law. A sister-in-law who takes over the house, not letting the wife speak or use the kitchen at all. I, the pitiful wife, am forced to do the simple chores of cleaning the toilet, cleaning the bath and chopping wood. Just when did I ever make you clean the toilet or the bath or anything like that at all? And if you think you can chop wood, then why don't you try it? More than any of that, just whose wife are you supposed to be? Dot don't ignore me. Dog mother-in-law. How the heck do you read that? In the end it was like always, the harsh quarreling would build up futilely and they would eventually reach the last street corner. They finally made it to the rented housing where Taiga's apartment and Otakazu residence were. However, at that time, finally caught up to you. Coming up from behind them, something had suddenly dove right before Ryuji's eyes. Taiga, who was walking in front of him, disappeared from his sight. W, what the heck? This fellow was hanging off of Ryuji's arm as if practically jumping at him. Considering how tightly he was being clung to, he felt like his left arm was being grasped with a desperate helplessness. I saw you go by just now, so I ran after you. Please don't pretend to be my friend. Uh dot a? Eh? Short of breath and with a hazy expression on her white face, the one pressing her slender body was a descended angel, or rather, it was Emi Kawashima, the girl generally ranked number one. She wasn't wearing the hat or the sunglasses at least, but she still had that black full body jersey on, and as usual, because she was trying too hard to be inconspicuous, she ended up standing out even more than usual. He wondered if she had maybe listened to what Tiger had said and been actually out running a marathon. However, Takazu-kun, please. Her pleading voice was overflowing with serious desperation, and even her breathing seemed as if a little jagged. Riji had absolutely no clue what on earth she was asking of him. N, um dot w, what? That guy over there. The slender fingers that were gripping Riji's arm tightened. Her hand was sweaty and more than that it seemed to be trembling slightly, it seemed like something was seriously not right. Perplexed, he tried following Ami's line of sight. What's that? The street corner just a bit in front of them, the shadow of a lamppost. There was a man standing abnormally still. Without thinking, Riji's face also stiffened. Quite difficult to see from where they were standing, the guy looked relatively slender and carefully dressed so he looked a bit like a college student on the outside, but if that were the case, he would be carrying more. At first glance, he might not be taken for a weird guy, but no matter how one thought about it, it just wasn't normal for someone to stand still, hidden in the shadows, 
so there was an atmosphere of weirdness about that guy, making him stick out from his surroundings. Seeming really frightened just from looking at that guy, Amy was trying as hard as she could to use Riggie's body as a shield and hide behind him. However, that man didn't seem to really care that they noticed him, since he didn't stop staring at Amy even for a moment. It was a bit dot no, it was probably exceptionally creepy, so Riggie was starting to step back with Amy until when, that's right, it's about time dot come on, let's settle this. Something even scarier had been on standby behind them. Turning around at the sound of the low curse-like murmur, he saw Tyga, who had more than likely been knocked aside by the leaping Amy and rolled to the edge of the street, as she slowly pulled herself up, I told you to run a marathon, but nobody said you could run around in front of my house, you damn brat dot I'm going to turn you into a dirty rag. She held one hand low with her fingers fluttering, the other raised up in the form of a fist, and both her feet were freely shuffling back and forth, left and right. Performing such skilled amateur footwork and calling out for a fight as if saying come, her eyes sparkled hungrily. Read the atmosphere. You get it, don't you? It was as if a tiger, the pissed off tiger, was at the front door and a wolf, the weirdo, at the back. They had unexpectedly ended up acting out the Chinese proverb, and having turned himself around a full 180 degrees, Riggi was forced for the time being to try and calm down a wild animal that had lost all sensibility. Without even really paying attention to Taiga, Emi had been roundaboutly running around trying to avoid eye contact with that weird man until finally, scary. She clung to Riggi's shoulder and firmly pressed her face against him. For a single moment, Taiga's pretty French doll face shook. Little by little, bit by bit. It kept twisting as if expanding diagonally from top to bottom until at one point, crack. Riggi definitely felt like he heard the sound of something snapping. And then. Listen we. Perhaps overly agitated, she was fanatically tripping over her words. Taiga shouted and with incredible leg strength that could even knock over a lamppost sent a nearby recycling bin flying with a vigorous kick. The seemingly heavy object made a loud bang. Spinning through the air. It passed over Ami's and Riggi's heads making a beeline for that suspicious character and continued for several meters before landing near his feet with a thunderous clang. Understandably taking a few steps back in fright, the man changed directions. He started running seriously and fled. Who's that guy? Watching his retreating figure, it seemed like even Tiger had finally noticed that there was someone there. Her great wrath disappeared almost instantaneously, suspicious. Full of distrust, that an inhibited mutter passed through her lips. Amy gradually started breathing normally and let go of Reggie's arm. However, she seemed helplessly unstable on her own two feet, are you okay? Ah, uh, yeah dot it's just been a long time since I ran so seriously dot too, I'm so exhausted. She tried to smile jokingly, but compared to her normally perfect smile, right now she looked quite stiff. Just what the heck was all that with that guy just now? Do you know him? He asked while lending her a hand, but she just shrugged ambiguously, that is dot um dot when I'm trying to shop dot I sometimes end up running into him there dot maybe he's an odd fan dot they're around sometimes, those kind of guys. Looking disturbed, her eyes were swirling around. At her appearance, Riggi and Tyga instinctively looked at one another. Considering how scared she had been just before, the fact she was now saying he was a fan. It left them uncomfortable and unable to say anything. However, Emmy turned to Riggi and clasped her hands aloft. Hey, I have a bit of a favor to ask. It's scary walking home by myself right now. That guy might still be around here somewhere. It's only for a little bit, so will you hide me in your house? Please. She said something like that. Rather than the good girl act she always had on, right now she was honestly showing a real expression. Riggi thought for a moment before finally asking her. Between this two-story rented house built from wood and the second floor of that first-class apartment built within the past year, which one would you like to be hidden within? That one. Replying without even a moment's hesitation, Amy was pointing her finger straight at the apartment building. Even though Riggi tentatively glanced at Taiga out of the corner of his eye wondering how will she react? That's my apartment. It's fine, come with me. It's probably for the best if you lay low for a while. 
A. Yours? Dot 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 this isn't a joke, I don't know what you'll do to me. Emmy looked at Tyga, someone with whom she had a horrible relationship, with a staring glance, but, don't be stupid. Don't you understand that this is an emergency situation? Tyga was shaking her head back and forth with a serious expression on her face. Then with a strong grip, she firmly took Ami's hand in her own. Once something happens, it'll be too late. This will be fine, so stay at my house. Wait a second you dot a, are you being honest? Are you saying that seriously? I'm just saying this in advance, but that house over there is Riggie's home. There are quite a few problems concerning the safety over there. Seriously, one time in the dead of night, I sneaked in through the window and nearly beat Riggie to death. It was easy. Easier than breathing. Emmy looked to Rigi as if saying that can't be, it's true. Rigi nodded as he said that. Emmy took some time to consider. Is this okay? Gently raising her large eyes, she quietly asked of Tyga. Really, she gently looked at her. Yeah. Of course. And then somewhat lazily, Tyga nodded without any doubt. Just a little bit moved by it all, Rigi unthinkingly ended up heartily whispering. You doubt you just might be a good fellow. It's just for this situation. It's not like I can't be sympathetic. Smiling generously, she firmly took hold of the still somewhat hesitant Tommy's shoulder. There might have even been a little bit of caring in her forcefulness. Kawashima-san, a lot of things have happened between us, but let's call a temporary truce for now. At Triji's house, there's his busy mother and an ugly weird parrot. It would be for the best if you chose to come to my house. Because she was showing such kindness, Rigi decided he would forgive her for insulting his pet by pretending not to have heard anything. Emmy still appeared a bit hesitant, but holding on to her shoulder, Tygel was practically dragging her while making way towards the apartment entrance. Ah, Tyga. What should I do about your dinner? Keep it for later will you, I'll eat it over there afterwards. Because I think I'm more alert when my stomach is empty. Without even giving him a chance to ask about her puzzling words, Tyga and Amy disappeared within the apartment. After it had gotten really late, Tyga came over to eat dinner at the Takazu residence. I'm stuffed. That was the best. Smiling in an unusually happy mood, she had eaten three whole servings of white rice and salmon, 